Four million cups. <clears throat> Seems to be really close. Welcome to, can you hear? There you go. There we go. All right. Welcome everybody to One Million Cups. Uh, we've got two presenters on the schedule. The second presenter has actually not shown up yet, so we're not sure what's going to happen, but we're going to play a little bit by ear. Uh, we're going to go ahead and welcome Jake Kaiser of Strong Key. Uh, he's our first presenter uh, to hear about the cybersecurity solution he's got for all of us. <laughs> yes, Jake, welcome. Thanks. Good morning, y'all. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. So if you recognize this voice, I used to host trivia in downtown Durham for like five years. And no stranger to mics like this, booming out across both the caves. But thanks for being here. Trivia is behind me. Cybersecurity is a new thing. Uh, I would love to talk to you a bit about this. Uh, I'm going to warn you, cybersecurity is tech and often scarily tech. So today is going to focus a lot on the function of what we're uh, and less so the actual tech within it. We're happy to chat about that in Q&A. Ready to roll? Yeah, yeah. Are we awake? Yeah. It's early. I'm never up this early. We've got a six month out of the home. I'm never up right now. Remember Target? Target 2013. Massive data breach. Billions of credit cards, zillions of dollars, all sorts of uh, brand damage and customer frustration. But what you may not remember is the uh, motive or the way into this attack. Uh, the way the target attack happened was through a little eight-person HVAC contractor in Pennsylvania. Uh, they're subject to a phishing attack there, and that was the wormhole into the rest of the target system. You see, to us, that story is not about target. It's actually about small businesses, and more specifically, how small businesses do not have the right tools needed to protect themselves from cyber attacks. Okay on this? I see I'll mess it back there. Sweet. In fact, it's more likely than not that a small business will be attacked. Last year, over half work, half lost data, and that amounts to a whole lot of lost damages, about a million dollars in theft and a million dollars in disrupted operations. Small businesses say, well, like, we don't have enough people for this. We don't have enough money to protect ourselves. And on top of that, well, we don't even have the right technology. On top of that, we're creeping a little bit. Can you help me out? You see my slides? I'm not sure why. Up or down or something? Yeah. Anyways, if it becomes a problem, we'll get there. On top of that, there is a problem with passwords. Um, in fact, last year, about half the people didn't ever change their password in five years. Excuse me real quick. I'll help you out. <clears throat> Is it okay? Sweet. All right. The problem with passwords. So, you might know this yourself. Five years go by, about half people never change their passwords. People reuse the same passwords across sites. People intentionally use easier passwords just so they don't forget it. And all of that adds up to four out of five data breaches involve weak, stolen, lost, abused passwords. There's a problem with passwords. So in the wake of all of this, and I don't even really need to market more cybersecurity with Deloitte, uh, Verizon, uh, Equifax in the news every week, we think we have a solution. So I'm from StrongKey. We are a spin-out of an established cybersecurity firm called StrongAuth. Here's what we've got. This is the StrongKey Talari. It is a physical box, easy to install, about as easy as a home internet router. It unlocks affordable, simple, and highly secure cloud storage and file share. It is both a hardware appliance and applications layered on top. Even better, it removes that burden of annoying passwords that we were just talking about. Yes, no more passwords with this. I promise not to talk tech, but I do want to make a point here that the way we do that is through something called FIDO. Anyone heard of it by chance? Awesome. So FIDO stands for Fast Identity Online. It is a rising protocol that has been used across the internet to remove passwords. The point here is not the tech. The point here is that we are part of a protocol adopted by Microsoft, it's in Windows 10, by Facebook, by Google, it is an Android, it is in every major credit card processor, soon 5 will be embedded on your credit card. The point here is not 
Strong Creates created something to put here that we are with a rising protocol in a way to enable that for our customers. Last point here, and I'll slow down because this one is a little bit tougher to grasp. Because this is hardware, there is unlimited scope for application development on top of it. So at the outset, you can do file sharing, you can do file transfer, cloud access, encryption. But where this goes is any developer can program an app that hooks into this box, much like um, iOS apps existed once the iPhone became a thing, secure applications exist once this box becomes a thing. In short, it is everything a small business needs to secure their data, and everything a web developer needs to create secure applications. Again, no passwords required. So when small businesses say, hey, we don't have people, I say, awesome. This thing is set up in a couple hours. You don't need a person to run it. When they say, we don't have enough money, I say, well, this thing probably costs less than what you spend on your photocopier every year. And when they say, well, we don't have the right tech, I can promise you that the security inside here is the same that we have developed and rolled out in places like the EU Central Bank, StubHub, AT&T, and the Central Bank of UAE. Is that one minute left? Yes. Out of 10? Well, out of five, six. Okay. <laughs> and passwords, we say wave goodbye. So um, would you prefer me to pause and take Q&A, or should I roll through the rest? Cool. cool. Can I have permission for about three, three, four more minutes? Is that okay with you all? Sweet. So in terms of the market, we did a whole lot of market betting. They say things like this. I'm really worried. I unplug my computers from the internet. I went to med school. I don't want to do IT. We're terrified of ransomware. And we waste hours talking about this every week. This is across industries. And one thing we have learned is that the applications here are diverse industries, legal to education, financial to healthcare, public safety. But the challenges are common. Ransomware, phishing, secure data. We solve them. To briefly dive into a use case, because I know we're up here, and you say, well, like, Jake, what exactly does this thing do? I'm going to show you a couple screens of what our initial application looks like. You will see this is a login screen. The background is customized to clients. You will notice there is no password input here. That is because we use a physical device or your phone to authenticate a user. From there, you see what a dashboard looks like, familiar, clean, modern, and from there, what a sample application looks like, again, from the user's perspective, Familiar. This is like the Dropboxes and Google Drives of the, of the world, but again, no passwords, highly secure. No passwords, highly secure. And uh, as of two days ago, some breaking news, and this is uh, to a room full of entrepreneurs, I, 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 would, I would love to share this. We have our first customer as of two days ago. Woo so we sold four of these to, um, uh, 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 can I say, a world government? I can't be more specific than that yet, at least, but it's super exciting. So, Thanks for the encouragement there. We sell them for 5,000 bucks for a kit. That is two of them, so they back each other up. You're always up and running. Subscription's 1,000 bucks a year. We waive it the first year. Again, this is the same technology that's protecting central banks. $5,000 gets you up and running. We sell through a variety of channels. We've got an e-store. We work through IT resellers. Uh, we go to industry conferences. These things probably don't surprise you. A bit about us. We're just about to wrap up. So I've mentioned this throughout the presentation. Uh, but there's important to note here. So we are spinning out of Strong Auth. Strong Auth's been in the Valley for 16 years. We have technology that my co-founder has created that literally is protecting central banks around the world. The only thing that has changed is the form factor. What used to be a server that goes in a rack room and be much more expensive has now been shrunk to something like this. But the security technology is identical. Identical. Um, me, my background is everything non-engineering related. So I've done startups from agriculture in West Africa to education in South Africa. And, um, come back here and I got roped in to be the, the, the nerd joke is that I am, I am Arshad's API to the world because he's a brilliant engineer, but uh, uh, he needs someone like me to not speak tech and kind of translate to the rest of us. We have our first beta product. I'm holding it right here. Uh, we're looking to publicly launch in 2018. We're looking for funding for sales and engineering and looking for developer partners. That's kind of where we are right now in our life cycle. But in addition to that, we are asked to bring something more specific in terms of tangible challenges. So challenge one, and you might have guessed this and it's some very valid feedback, is the product market fit. So you say, okay, great, Jake, you're relevant to everybody and their mom as you roll out all these industries. An easy way that we're gonna sink in our early days is trying to spread ourselves too thin. So any kind of introductions to customer vetting, customer discovery, uh, uh, any kind of early adopted tech 
So one thing I've learned, for example, is dentists are very tech averse, and dental patients don't really care about their data, even if they're technically HIPAA compliant, while lawyers care very deeply about this stuff. So any kind of narrowing down on a product market fit as we have diverse industries would be very helpful to me. And secondly, we're looking to hire specifically around engineering talent. Arshad is stepping back to strong off, which will continue to be the think tank that uh, fuels us as a sales and development arm which means there's a really cool opportunity for someone at a VP of engineering CTO role. We're also looking for a product manager. Um, that's looking to come on board in the next three months or so. Happy to talk more about any of that. Sorry to rush y'all, if you want to talk more about that, here's my contact information. I have a bunch of business cards. Um, and let's move to Q&A, is that cool? Sweet, all right. Thank you. You gotta put it really close to your mouth, and red light means it's on, which is totally uh, counter. Three things. <laughs> One, software downloads. How do you manage your software downloads on this? So, uh, by software downloads, there, there's nothing coming to the computer. Everything is run on the web okay. and makes callbacks to your to your box. Yeah, that is, a, that is a great question. So we are not we are, we are not anti-cloud. We are anti-cloud only. So the analogy that we use is uh, using Dropbox. You're breaking up with your phone. Yeah, the yeah, IT guys much. are working on the microphones. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm happy to talk without a mic. You don't need it. <laughs> I, I know I don't. They want it for the okay. recording. Thanks. This is actually really good because we need to test this to fix it. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in beta testing myself. You're doing great. Yeah, it's thanks okay. for your help. Um, the, the, the question is about storage. So uh, we are we are not anti-cloud. We're anti-cloud only. So one of the technical functions of our box is local key management and local encryption. So the analogy for the non-tech folks in the room is using Dropbox is like buying a new house. And your realtor comes with you and says, hey, welcome home, here's your champagne, here's your house keys. By the way, I'm keeping a copy for myself, but don't worry, you can trust me. But should the police ever come to that realtor or that realtor get mugged, your house is getting broken into. In our world, you and only you, pointing to the, to the box, because this is hardware, this is cryptographic hardware in there, manage those keys. So we integrate with any cloud storage out there. This thing also has a terabyte hard drive on it. But we integrate with any cloud storage out there only you can look at your stuff. So even if Dropbox or Box or AWS were hacked, as they as they are, um, you would just take your gobbledygook out there. So can you give me like a tangible example, um, a small business, uh, maybe I have a retail front, because right now I'm, in my head I'm thinking, so if, if somebody gets what, my USB key, and then they have access to the, you know, if that's just, Chilling by the register. If someone has access to that, they have access to my data. Yeah, another another good question. So this FIDO protocol, um, I'll hold a different one of them here. So this is a Bluetooth one. Functions as something you have, and for the tech folks in the room, you need to couple it with something you know. It is those two factors together that unlock it. So either you have a physical authenticator and a simple pin or a simple password. So this still eliminates the. 12 characters, drop of blood, special character kind of thing. Or you have a biometric authenticator. One of the two. One of the two. Um, does that answer the question? Yeah, and then just like a real life example, like uh... Sure, absolutely, absolutely. And I know I know it is super high level. Um, so imagine, if you will, a law firm. Uh, law firms are increasingly being targeted. In fact, DLA Piper could not go to court recently because their stuff was ransomed. They could not go next, they could not go to court. It's ridiculous. Um, if DLA Piper were a client of ours, 5,000 bucks, kit is up and running. They have a DLA Piper brand, branded portal. And in order to access files, someone need, would need to use our secure authentication to just get their stuff. Now they too could then turn to their clients and say, hey, we're secure now. Here's how you communicate with us. Have a FIDO token. Here's our portal, dlapiper.strongkey.net. And when the user logs in, they don't need a box. They just need one of these or their phone and then they can securely communicate back and forth. So 
I use a law firm because they have IP to protect, they have secure documents, they're being targeted, this is a way to protect against that. Right now, lawyers are doing crazy stuff like <laughs> calling each other on the weekends to swap secure information or sending stuff through the mail or using attachments and email, which are all highly insecure. Does that help? Yeah, it does. Thank you. So it's great that you have uh, authentication, uh, uh, this is strong uh, storage. It's great that it's not backed up off site. It's not backed up on site. Is that correct? Correct. What happens when the box is stolen? So this is why we run a highly available kit, and this is absolutely a part that we clearly communicate to our customers as they come on board. We sell two, they mirror each other, and we say, do not put them in the same place, put them in a highly secure physical place. For customers who want to be extra secure, we sell a third box that we keep on our own site. But our general philosophy to all this is like, you shouldn't trust Dropbox, don't trust us with your stuff either. So if you happen to buy three boxes that all back each other up, and then you threw them in your fireplace just to be devious, there's nothing I could do. I could, I could never access what you had in your box. The keys are yours and yours alone. How much modification to your existing software or the software that you're using in your facility needs to be done in order to support this? Ah, great question. So we have the the security side of it all is down and has been implemented now since 2009 as about this iteration. Security is down, Pat, it is currently in use, but it's being sold to IT people and it's ugly as sin. So kind of step one for us is getting with those demo screens you saw, getting that user experience plugged more into the security tech that we had. Um, with the web developer, that's three months of work or so. But from there, where we go is what other applications make sense. So again, if you if y'all left here and said, okay, it's Dropbox in a physical box, I think you would miss the broader point here. The broader point is this enables web applications to be created. It just so happens the first one of those are really relevant because they're file sharing and file storage, which is something we all do. So the step after that is what other industry relevant applications are out there. So for example, we were at a public safety conference a month ago. Um, talking with police officers about a, a GPS app that lets them see where each other are, talking about how you communicate across public safety lines. These are all web applications that can be developed and then marketed to the public safety community. So it's kind of a short term, and then there's the vision. Cool. Actually, kind of building on that same concept about uh, applications you see being built onto this down the road, what would stop somebody a nefarious party from creating applications that get embedded into the community that then allow for mayhem and bad, and, and bad stuff and then all of a sudden now they're, they're mixed in with all the good stuff. Hmm. Um, if I'm interpreting your question correctly, and it's a good one, um, I would say that there don't envision a marketplace like, like the Apple Store where you can pick and choose. Imagine stuff that's funneled through us and then either co-branded or co-marketed or sold through us. And so our model is not, hey, anyone in the world come design this stuff and make it publicly available for download. The model is, hey, education app developers. I've had a couple of conversations like this. What would it look like to all design these things together and then sell one of these to an, edu to an education facility? Something that would have anti-bullying software, student grade records, parent-teacher communication, all these things accomplished through a single sign-on and highly secure data. And then that singular product would be tested internally and then sold, rather than just whoever can access it. funnels them. through you at all times. Indeed. Okay, got it. In the back? Yeah. Great. Chris, pick one. <laughs> one so, uh, Ray, hold it up, is please. This is this a development platform, or is it a tool? In other words, are you offering this facility for people who want to build a particular application around their company or their, uh, or is it a tool that can be plugged, plugged, plugged and played in any environment? Um, I'm going to say both and I hope it's not a cop out. So our hope is for a developer community to emerge. We sell a singular box for development purposes for a thousand bucks to a development community. I'll be transparent with y'all, it's early in our life that we don't have a developer community yet, that is the hope. Right now, it is probably more likely to be sold as a tool, but again, that's the short term and then the long term. The hope is that we can enable 
others to develop stuff, much like an, like an Intel inside model, if you will. Um, rather, and then you have a little bit of a, a powered by strong key or something like that that unlocks other application developments. Because that's that's the really exciting part. Like the, the file sharing is important, but like that's it's, it's just it's just the beginning. I, one thing just to uh, kind of clarify, so the box itself is um, encrypting the data that's being stored on the web. So it's it's the data, so if the boxes went in the fire, the data would be there, but it would be encrypted in a way that nobody would be the able to. The keys fried, yeah. The keys fried. So the box is in, the storage is really <coughs> based on web, so it, it's scalable. Are you using Amazon or those kind of things? We're agnostic. Yeah, so right right now we integrate with three different cloud providers, but really it's just rental space because it's your encrypted stuff on there. Could you integrate within an uh, internal server too? Could you? Yes. Okay, yeah. and uh, um, the other question is why do you go with the upfront pricing with the um, long-term kind of licensing? I know there have been a couple companies that have switched away from that. Even if they didn't really, like Tableau, which went from that kind of pricing model to a monthly uh, SaaS based kind of model, um, but still based on annual contracts. It'll be creative hub too. Yeah, yeah, a great question and an ongoing discussion for us. The answer today is because we have hardware to manufacture and because we are not funded, it's kind of a way to cover costs. Um, if someone came to me this morning and wrote a check, then we can get a whole lot more creative because then we can, then we can front the cost of the box and then lease it back over time. I, I completely agree with you right now, it's just a practical limit. I have, a, I have a question. Is um, you develop this uh, this platform? Do you do it from scratch, or you build it on someone's platform? That's what I want to know. So my co-founder did it from scratch, beginning 16 years ago. So it's been about a decade and a half of his own work, uh, module upon module upon module, um, and has culminated in this. And so strong off that was mentioned in this presentation continues operating. Continue selling, continue selling this. So, did you write the algorithm for that? Or it was, you know, it was, I mean, that's what I want to know. Uh, I believe his inspiration might have been some open source stuff out on the web, uh -huh. but he's, he's a coder himself, yes. Okay, uh, the other question I want to know, oh, you know, now we are moving to uh, blockchains, you know what I'm saying? That's the thing we are moving on, you know what I'm saying, as uh, engineers, because of, uh, you know what I'm saying? If, as long as your information is out there, you know what I'm saying, we are, we're now moving to blockchain. What makes you different from now the blockchain and all that stuff? Because now we're moving into blockchain. And in terms of your, um, the box, does it have a backup? Because, you know, once you have a local, you know, you're doing your own stuff, what we've noticed, it slows down your, your uh, the system in the office and, you know, it slows down the system. Does it have a backup? Are you using somebody else's uh, uh, platform too? Or that's what we want to, I want to know. Cool. So the, the blockchain, yeah, um, you can't go to a conference this year without hearing AI and blockchain and often, <laughs> often together. And for, for good reason. Um, I'm not a blockchain expert, but we also will say that blockchain is not a competition for us. And in fact, we have a bit of a longer three to five year vision on how our ecosystem could enable our own blockchain. Blockchain itself, though, is not immune. I, it was it was it Ethereum that just kind of disappeared in the ether? Um, there, are, there are similar authentication problems with how do you maintain cryptocurrency in your wallet and these kind of things. And I'm again I'm not a blockchain expert. It is something that we see value in and unlimited to things beyond cryptocurrency. But it is a longer term thing than we have right here. Yes. Well, uh, let me give you an example. Right now, on blockchain. Yeah, happy, happy to follow up with that. That'd be a worthwhile conversation. Okay. Okay. Is it on? Is it red? <laughs> yeah, it's red. Then uh, give it a shot, yeah. Oh, 
Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So, if I understand correctly, um, as long as I'm connected to the same network, this device is connected. I'm protected. But today, I'm basically working everywhere. Uh, what happened if not, if I'm not connected to the network? This device is connected. Cool. A, a good question. As long as this device is up and running, you can access it from anywhere. But I do want to carefully qualify something. We are not in the network security business. And in fact, our philosophy is kind of assume your network will be breached. How do you still protect your data? So again, this is web application based. If, I'm, if I have my appliance up and running in Durham and I'm traveling across the world, as long as it is powered, I can access my jake.stronky.net appliance. So two quick questions for you. Uh, you mentioned the FIDO standard. Does that mean that any application that is being built to, to use that specific secure interface will be compatible with your system? Yes, yes, and it, uh, an astute question and an exciting one because one of the things that we have is called FIDO sign-on, which means as you enter your dashboard, you are then authenticated into everything else. So today, you could log into your Salesforce, your Gmail, all sorts of things with FIDO, and it is the same individual key for all of those things, yes. And number two, um, there's a lot of interest in HIPAA-compliant systems today. Have you done anything to certify your system for HIPAA compliance uh, support? So we have been, our technology has been used for HIPAA compliance. Um, I will say that from a business perspective, the healthcare market seems a trickier one to break into given how many incumbent players are there. But there could be value for us. Um, so that, that psychiatrist that I had up there, uh, don't go to her. She keeps her patient notes in Google Docs. Like that's just, that's her model. So someone like that who's an individual three-person practice might have value like this because for her it would ensure compliance. Something like the Duke Hospital system, too big, too incumbent, too many IT people, that's that's not our space to play. Thank you. Hi. Uh, having been a CFO for an SMB, uh, by default I was the IT purchasing guy, not knowing anything about IT. Uh, love your presentation. This almost sounds too good to be true. So how do you get over? I can charge more if you want, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is to educate a guy like me that knows very little about IT. And secondly, being a financial guy, how are you funded and what kind of money do you need to get for you? Yeah, absolutely. So again, transparency, y'all, like a, we're a startup. Pricing right now is a hypothesis. So... It may be that 5K is crazy to some people and too cheap for others. In my mind, the approach was I want to be credit card passable. Like I don't want to trip off any sort of process like ah, I need to get approval here, we need to write a PO, and come sign a subsystem, all these kind of stuff. I want to be able to swipe a credit card and move on our way. The second thing is as you look at some of our application design, it is intentionally designed in a non-technical way. It is simple. Icons are big. It should feel familiar if you're, if you're an Android or iOS user. Um, it is designed for the non-technical person. And in fact, my contention has been business functionality might matter more than security. And I, I think some of those password stats kind of bear that out. How easy is it to change our password and we just don't do it? Security oftentimes is one of those things that we think we should do and then we just never get around to. Um, and to your last question, uh, in terms of funding, oh, excuse me, the, the second part of how do I convince me as a non-technical person is through our association and partnership with Strong Off. There's not been a breach in the decade and a half to high-profile players that the same tech has rolled out in. It just, it just isn't. We don't say hack-proof, but it just isn't. Funded right now, we are half bootstrapped and then half funded through Strong Off, who continues doing business operations. Two, two quick questions. One of them on or not. Um, First of all, a lot of us have smaller companies. We have companies where most of our employees work out of their homes or travel or on the road, et cetera. How does this work with that type of company? Yeah. Um, so in terms of smaller companies, this thing for the tech folks in the room, it's a, a hundred transactions per second. So kind of imagine if you were an e-commerce platform and you have to get pinged a hundred times a second through credit card transactions. So it scales very nicely. Uh, 20 to 200 people is about what my sweet spot probably looks like. It certainly could go smaller. Um, again, as long as this thing is up and powered, you are good to go. 
So if you had a secure closet in your home office and everyone decided to work from home on a Thursday, as long as it was up and running, you could be accessing your web applications literally anywhere with an internet connection. And works with VPN as well? Indeed. Okay. And the other question I always have to ask is, as you probably know, four out of five small businesses fail within five years. If we bought into this, then you know, a thousand people also bought into it, but none of us keep you up and running, what would happen? Nine, 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 nine. That's a really interesting question. Sorry about that. No, there's no, no need to apologize. So these are fresh answers from me. So bear me out as I think as I speak. So one, we're an open source play. Open source software never really goes away. So there would be no proprietary shutdown, can't use this anymore. Two, I think it would take a whole heck of a lot to put strong off out of business now. Strong off clients on six continents, 16 years of profitability. And I suspect that they would stand us up. And not, if that were important to a small business, that might be something that we could commit to, for example. So that's that's great feedback. Um, and lastly, as you say, small businesses and the difficulties of staying in business, um, it just kind of tripped off something. It's not a direct answer to you, but I, I recently read that one out of five small businesses shut, shut down as a result of uh, the fallout from a cyber attack, which is just crazy, crazy to think. So not one out of five. But once attacked, twenty percent of those attacked will then eventually go out of business. It's just it's a really it's a really tough world for small businesses. Does that answer your question? Uh, since this involves only on the physical keys, what about you bring on more employees, how do you get more keys? What if they lose a key? You can get a key replaced, does everybody yeah. have to get a new key if somebody loses a key? Yeah, yeah. So um, Permission to talk about FIDO more broadly with that question? Yeah, maybe that I think I'll answer your question. Go for it. Cool. So again, FIDO again, this is not strong key tech. This is big time protocol. They're in talks with the WC3 right now to embed it inside web browsers. Like this is this is big time. The most common thing is, oh my gosh, Jake, you're holding something physical, I'm gonna lose it. Someone's gonna steal it and hack into my stuff. Okay. Um, we've already addressed that you can't steal someone's stuff because it's paired with something you know. Uh, or a biometric, so that's that answer. Two, keys are easy to replace. Right now, today, y'all could log on to Amazon and get some variant of this for 10 to 60 bucks and probably get same day delivery. So they're easy to replace. And then within our admin console is a place where you can delete old keys, add new users, self-register, it's quite easy. It requires, in order to register, it sends an email to you and it sends a text to you. So kind of two factors there to get you in. And then if all of that fails, you're like, I just need to work today and I can't find my key, we do have a one-time password replacement. So if you don't have absolutely nothing, you can still log in and get a text to your phone for a one-time pin and get you in. We are also in a funny window right now where this physicalness matters. So right now, Google has committed to every new Android phone being produced, there is Fido within it. And so in a very short amount of time, your phone becomes your authenticator and then this whole, I gotta carry something else, um, turns into something that you already have with you. Um, Apple is, as you probably know, a little closed looked about these kind of things, but we hope and speculate they'll not be far behind. Again, every major credit card is on this. I was just in Las Vegas last week in MasterCard. Um, you know that your credit cards have a little chip on it. It's a process. They're embedding FIDO on the chip itself. So there will be a time when your authenticator can be your credit card yourself. So all these kind of serve to say, we're in a weird window right now where maybe 12 to 24 months where people are carrying them around on their key rings. Um, but the time is coming where they're embedded in stuff that you probably already have. And for people who are super paranoid that you still you still carry around your own on the side. Does the answer? Thanks. All right, we yeah, we thank you. And then one last question here. And then we'll have to okay. <clears throat> Good morning, Jake. Uh, thank you. Uh, a question I would have is, let's say, your um, transfer of information from the strong key to your system. Is it vulnerable at that point? Um, of course, is there uh, some type of... Uh, uh, tell, me, tell me more about transferring information. Well, okay, uh, we've accessed strong key and we have a system that we use to uh, implement that data or as we're functioning as a company. Um, while it's on our system, the, the strong key protect the data while it's on the system or just stored? Uh, gotcha. Yes, protect it on the system. The, the customer education piece you might have would be if you have a, uh, a second party who is not 
part of your system. So let's say in this legal example, you've got a, a knucklehead who's just, you've sent them all this secure stuff, and they're like, okay, cool, and then they attach an email themselves and send it to their buddy. Like that's the kind of stuff that is behavior and not technology, but on your side, yes. Yeah. Right, so we have one final question here. This might not be a question, it's more of just a concern or comment. Um, you mentioned, from what I understand, there are, you essentially are selling two units to a business. One is the backup unit. And you said if, if you like were feeling frisky and threw in a fire, everything would be gone. And, and from what I hear from that, I'm assuming that means that if something happens to my two units that I own, I have no way to access the data that was stored. I guess the question would be, number one, is your hardware guaranteed to last? Is that, that's kind of terrifying. If something happens to the hardware, you know, my, my data is gone. I can't get to it. So that's kind of my... Sure. I, I, I completely understand. And again, there is an option. You could chain together as many of these things as you wanted. So for someone who was like nuts, you could buy five of them and hide them all across the world. Um, I will say that the industry has borne out that uh, what we call a high availability kit. So it's um, technically not one is not a backup, but they're just mirrored images, um, is reliable enough. We do have a data center that is available that we can shove the third box in there and kind of back up the rest of them. So um, I understand. I think it sounds scarier than experience would, would bear it out to be. Just a comment on that too. I think everyone forgets that the cloud. Uh, I saw a meme once, and it said, um, oh, "What if I told you the cloud was just someone else's computer?" And and that's the truth. The, the cloud is, is is physical, right? So you know, and a lot of times those server centers are, are redundant as well. But yeah, when it, when those server centers blows up, and then there go all your Google Docs. So I mean, they're redundant. And, He's shaking his head. Yeah, they're all redundant. Yeah. They're all multiply redundant in multiple right. locations. So what he's saying is it's best practice to have two, and that's actually commonplace. When you have something on the cloud, you're you're dealing with the same system. But most, most companies have a off-site backup strategy. The answer to that question is if people are having a mm -hmm. issue with possibly with their data, they always implement some kind of backup off-site storage capability. This is not the value. Correct. Well, unfortunately, we need to bring it to an end. Jake, thank you very, very much. Unfortunately, our second presenter is a no-show. We're not sure why.